after lunch coffee and after lunch dessert. My name is Adam Kiczynski and there is... I'm Piotr Nielubowicz. And we have introductory presentation of CD Projekt Group. Peter, let's start. Okay, so uh, we started our gaming business back in 1994. <laughs> However, CD Projekt became a public company in 2010 by merging with a company that was already public. And thanks to that, we brought uh, CD Projekt Gaming into the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Since then, the stock price of CD Projekt grew approximately 100 times, which is not a bad achievement, I believe. And uh, the revenue we recently enjoyed on our stock are somehow between 10 and 15 million dollars uh, daily. Uh, the company is, uh, uh, the, the current market cap of the company is approximately 2.4 billion dollars, and the company is still owned in approximately one third by the original founders and board members of the company, including myself and uh, Adam. We have two financial institutions on the board above 5% threshold, that is Nationale Nederlanden, a local <laughs> Polish pension fund, and a company I'm sure you all know from, from Sweden, Sweet Bank Rubber, that uh, recently joined uh, our Mm, our stockholder above 5% uh, threshold and 57% accounts as a uh, free float. Uh, as I said, uh, the company, the, so the project business was established in 1994. First, we were just a uh, local gaming distribution. We were licensing games, translating them into Polish, doing local Polish marketing campaigns, and distributing them uh, along all the retail chains in our country. We extended the business into Czech, Slovakia, and Hungary. However, our dream was always to create our own games. And that's how, in 2002, we established the Project Red Development Studio. Then, in 2008, we also started a new segment of the business, a GOG, a digital distribution uh, store. Three years ago, we sold uh, the classical distribution business, the one we started the company with, and we focused on the two business segments, development and digital distribution, uh, as we believe that the two segments have the global potential of revenues, global potential of reach, and that's something we want to be focused for the future. Uh, so the Project Red Games Development employs approximately 600 people right now, and the digital distribution is uh, 150. Most of uh, the people that work for the Project Group uh, work in our Warsaw office. We also have a Krakow Development Studio and two marketing offices, one in Los Angeles and one recently opened last year in Shanghai. Adam? Let's start from CD Projekt Red, so development. We are working on two franchises, The Witcher and Cyberpunk, something new to us. The first Cyberpunk game is still in development. In terms of Witcher, we've released three games. Witcher 1, 2 and 3. Uh, Witcher 1 just for PC in 2007, then Witcher 2 based on our own technology for PC in 2011 for Xbox 360 in 2012, and then Witcher 3 two years, oh, actually almost three years ago in 2015 for, for three platforms. From the beginning, our main goal, our main objective was to deliver great quality. And we succeeded. Witcher 1 got 86 Metacritic score. Metacritic is average weighted score of critics around the world. Uh, up to 93 for Witcher 3. We believe that quality is a key factor of business success, and we proved it. Uh, all Saga altogether sold over 25 million copies by the end of 2016. Our recipe for top quality is pretty simple. We believe that we should do everything important internally. So from creation, uh, we own uh, IPs or in terms of, of, of games we based on, so we don't license them. Then development is run in-house uh, almost in 100% with 
quality as absolute priority. Then technology is ours. We believe that we have great technology suitable for our own games. It's Red Engine. Then we are a publisher of our own games. So we control the business part uh, of uh, the, the publishing part of our business, uh, being sure that gamers are always first. Then the only small part of the business we outsource is physical distribution, but we rely on, on uh, proven business partners around the world. And then we are those who speak to gamers around the world through our marketing campaign, through our, our PR, by our own people. And by this, we achieved great success with Witcher 3. All Witchers were successful, but Witcher 3 especially. Witcher 3 got over 800 awards around the world. It was one of the most awarded game ever. And some numbers about our Witchers. Piotr. Yeah, and uh, all the awards were adding to uh, positive PR and positive hype about our games and the hype allowed us to uh, enjoy nice tales. Uh, I put together all the three features, uh, and the data I put together, they reflect just the initial sales for the first few weeks on the market, just for the first quarter of the release of each of the games. As you see, The Witcher 2 uh, sold unit-wise approximately twice as much as uh, we did with The Witcher 1, and The Witcher 3 was over four times bigger unit-wise sales than, uh, than The Witcher 2. This uh, nicely resulted into in, in an increase of revenues, and the revenues on Witcher 3 were even seven and a half times bigger than what we achieved on Witcher 2, just on the release uh, time frame, as I mentioned. Why was that so? Um, first of all, uh, there was a bigger share of digital distribution during the Witcher 3 times than uh, we had on the Witcher 2 times, and on each digitally distributed copy, we uh, can enjoy higher revenues as as uh, as the developer, as a creator, than on a box edition of a game. Secondly, after the success of Witcher 2, we were able to negotiate uh, better contracts with distributors. Uh, that also added to the higher revenue per copy we enjoyed on the Witcher 3 side. And also, the scale effect on the Witcher 3 allowed us to, to earn more on each copy uh, versus the previous parts of the game. This revenues resulted in nice profits, so just on opening of the sales cycle on The Witcher 3, we earned net over 60 million of euros, that is eight and a half times more than, uh, than we enjoyed on The Witcher 2. Uh, if you look at our games in a bit longer perspective, this slide presents the revenues we enjoy, enjoyed and still keep enjoying on The Witcher 1. Uh, these are revenues, not the number of units sold. Obviously, over the time, the price of each video game goes down. However, with nice quantities, you can maintain stable levels of revenues uh, generated on the market for many, many years. In this case, we have 10 years of, uh, of Witcher 1 on the market. And as you see, obviously, the, the, the most important is the release year, but then for the next nine years, uh, we uh, kept selling Witcher once uh, for a long, long time, and the product that was fully paid back, that all the marketing cost was also fully covered, brought us uh, revenues on a stable levels for, for many, many years. Very similarly, uh, th this slide presents the revenues of Witcher 1, so exactly what you see a second before, however, in a scale of Witcher 2. So very similarly, the situation looks with the Witcher 2, we, uh, with small exception that we had like two release years. So first we released the game in 2011 on PC, and then a year after it was brought to the market on Xbox 360, that's why the first two bars are so high, but then we kept selling Witcher 2 for, for another four years' time. And if you look at the same sales of Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 in a scale of Witcher 3, uh, then obviously you see the jump we've made uh, again for the, first, for the third time. And uh, there is one more very interesting thing on the Witcher 3, the, the second year versus the first year. It's obviously much higher than what we had previously in the past, and it's the effect of the strategy we, we brought to the market that uh, sometime after releasing the base game, we decided to produce and uh, bring to the market two expansions, uh, 
Uh, all of them were big expansions, uh, 20, 30 games of, uh, hours of gameplay, and gamers really enjoyed it. After some time, we also created so-called Game of the Year edition that contained not only the base game, but the two expansions, everything in one salt, and that allowed us to prolong the life cycle of, of Witcher 3, and it all added uh, together nicely to the achievement with Witcher 3 we had in 2016 and initially in 15. If we go more into details, uh, digging in, in, into the numbers, it doesn't really make sense to compare our results year by year, since if you compare a release year with non-release year, then obviously there is a huge jump. But as I did it previously, it, it, it's really reasonable to compare releases with releases. Therefore, I put together the 2015 and 16, two years of The Witcher 3, versus the 2011 and 12, the two years of The Witcher 2. The revenues of the group increased four and a half times. At the same time, the gross profit on sales uh, increased 7.4 times. To achieve such gross profit, we had to spend more. But the costs on the operational level increased only 3.8 times uh, versus the Witcher 2 times. And this allowed us to, to bring to, uh, to investors the net profits in the amount of over 11 times bigger for the Witcher 3 two years than all we achieved on The Witcher 2. And I remember the times we brought Witcher 2 to the market, and uh, the net profit was over 5 million euros for the first year, and it was like really being the king of the world, uh, earning so much on the release, much more than we did on The Witcher 2. And uh, yeah, this success was nicely multiplied with, with The Witcher 3 result uh, four years later. Uh, if you look at our profitability, the excellent sales and the excellent uh, economics of The Witcher 3 allowed us to um, deliver really healthy profitability of the group. So the net profit after taxation, after covering all the costs, in this case after depreciating all the development spent on The Witcher 3, left us with 43% as the net profit versus the... Uh, of, <laughs> left us with 43% as the net profit uh, from, from the sales we achieved, which is, which is a pretty healthy situation. We already have the results for the first three quarters of last year, of 2017. Uh, we didn't bring anything as spectacular as the Witcher 3 premiere to the market uh, during that time, but we still keep selling Witcher 3s. There is a, a new product, Adam will tell you more about uh, Gwent. It's in a beta phase, it also adds to the results. And for the three quarters only, we earned over 36 millions of, of euros net. And the profitability of the group even slightly increased, reaching 46%. But this was book-wise, and what we believe uh, is uh, obviously that cash is, is showing you the very precise situation of the company, and uh, is actually something that uh, that allows you for further development, for further investments, and for for growing the business if if you can uh, if you have the assets to to invest. When we became public back in 2010, we had more credits and loans, the red field, than cash on hand, that was the green field. We released The Witcher 2, we managed to pay back all the credits in 2011 and 12. Then in 2013 and 13, we were continuing selling The Witcher 2, and at the same time heavily investing into development of Witcher 3, that is presented by the blue field. Then 2015, a very important year for us, year of release of The Witcher 3, we nicely converted and even multiplied the blue investment into development of Witcher 3 into green cash generated by sales of Witcher 3. And the next year, 2016, even though there was no such a big release, just the expansion and continuation of Witcher 3 sales, the company was still very cash positive. Uh, we also have the, we already have the three quarters of 2017. Uh, for the first time in our history, we paid uh, out a dividend to our shareholders in the amount of uh, slightly over 100 million zlotych. We keep investing into future developments, mostly Cyberpunk and Gwent, the blue part. And even though uh, we are still cash positive and the amount of cash within the group uh, presented in, in euros on the slide, on the, on the green field uh, grew uh, from January to September. 
uh, where we do all the sales, uh, how we earn money, uh, which is absolutely distributed, is distributed absolutely globally. Our number one country is North America, then all the important European countries. Uh, this slide presents the unit sales by region. Asia is, is also visible on the map. Uh, we enjoy um, nice sales there uh, in Japan, in Korea, in China, in, in all the gaming countries of, uh, of Asia. Adam? And jump into the future, Gwent. Uh, Gwent is AAA quality, free-to-play, online multiplayer game. Uh, the first game of this kind in, in our history, so that's our, that's our university of learning how to operate this kind of game. We've released uh, Gwent in closed beta more and, than a year ago. Now we are still in beta, now it's in open uh, beta. The game was initially tested in Witcher 3 because Gwent was uh, a mini game within Witcher 3 and people loved it. So uh, by this we knew that mechanics is great and we decided to develop independent, uh, this time online mul multiplayer game. Uh, we are focusing on business, that's why I'm jumping into monetization. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's standard. We sell stuff within the game, so we sell card packs, we sell vanity stuff. We will be selling additional game modes. Actually, in a few weeks from now, we'll launch a new mode to the game, Arena mode, which will be paid. And there will be, this year, there will be first single player campaign, paid one, a game of, uh, thr uh, sorry, uh, Thronebreaker. Uh, and it will be pretty decent. Uh, chunk of content, 20, 30 hours of, of uh, gameplay. Gwent now is still in early phase, as I said. This is in, uh, the game is in open beta. This year we will uh, launch officially, we'll uh, be out of uh, beta. The game operates on three platforms, PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And we started esports as well. We launched the first esports season. It's uh, not very big stuff, but uh, it's going pretty well. Uh, we are pretty happy. Game game is uh, really sportish, uh, really competitive. It's it's a very tactical game. It's more much more tactical than other games uh, on the market. So it's worth to tr to, to to train. It's worth to 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 skill skill yourself. Next steps, those steps are for, for this year. As I said, we are uh, launching a new mode, Arena, pretty soon. There will be new faction, new leaders, uh, we'll have single player campaign, and we'll go, go out of, of, of beta phase. And some more stuff we are not ready to share now, but that, that's not whole list for, for this year. Another game we are developing in Cyberpunk. Actually, the, 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 people, the, the team working on Cyberpunk is three times bigger than, than people working on Gwent. Cyberpunk is our new Witcher 3, but m even more ambitious. We, our goal is to establish a new blockbuster franchise from the beginning. We work in new universe, futuristic universe. Uh, we believe uh, it's very appealing to, to, to uh, players, uh, not only RPG players, but this is true RPG, like Witcher, like Witcher 3. Uh, for mature audiences, it's handcrafted, detailed, of course, uh, open world with uh, open-ended uh, gameplay. So, great game, more ambitious than Witcher 3, and we believe that we can aim, aim um, more ambitious business goals uh, as well. Of course, still uh, having game, having gamer-centric focus and and quality uh, focus as a main uh, main pr priority. And the last part of the presentation, our distribution part, GOG. 
Uh, we launched this business, as Peter mentioned, in 2008. This is a digital store with mostly PC games, and since 2015, this is uh, application with uh, you can install on your uh, machine with the same store. And this application is um, uh, supporting multiplayer games as well, and it's a technological backbone for our own productions, uh, multiplayer productions like, uh, like Gwent. So in terms of business, Peter, two slides. Yeah, the global split of revenues generated by GOG is very similar to the ones I presented you for The Witcher, except for the fact that GOG is more focused, it was more focused so far on the Western world, so Asia is less represented, uh, and exactly the same as for The Witcher. The, Share of our local domestic sales in Poland, uh, both on GOG and on The Witcher, is below 5%. It, it accounts for 3, 4, or 5%, depending on a period. So, in case of the whole group business we run, uh, over 95% of our revenues are export revenues. Uh, and as for the revenues of GOG, uh, I put together all the <coughs> revenues GOG made over the time uh, since 2011, half yearly. Uh, and what you see currently are the sales we achieved on uh, third parties' products. On top of that, GOG is obviously an arm for us to deliver our own games. And uh, also on our own productions, uh, we saw a very nice increase of sales uh, directly via GOG. Uh, as you can imagine, if we sell our own games directly to an end consumer with our own store, then 100% of the retail price the gamer pays for, for the product stays within the group. So this is the most efficient way, business-wise, for us to deliver the products to, to gamers. And recently, in the first half of 2017, we, we enjoyed a really huge increase of uh, our own internal sales. Uh, via GOG distribution channel, a uh, big part of that was uh, coming from the Gwent project. All right, to sum it up, uh, we deliver AAA games based on two IPs so far. Uh, we started our journey into multiplayer free-to-play world uh, with Gwent, but that's our first project, of course, we will uh, we'll develop more games like this in the in the future, and we have GOG as a digital store for third party, and as a technological backbone and uh, our own internal technology for multiplayer free, free to play, and to some extent for our three AAA uh, games as well. So we have. Uh, in this case, we have full environment, digital environment for, for gaming with third-party uh, games uh, in the store. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I tried to, to read into the company and uh, I know it's quite a secret and, and a lot of people on forums etc is uh, speculating on upcoming titles uh, especially cyberpunk which has been expected for years um, but first um, maybe we can start with, with, with the beginning of, of, of the witcher series uh, what steps did you take to achieve this quality improvement and the success for every installment of the series why was Witcher 3 so successful compared to the previous two games? What, what did you change in the uh, development uh, over the cycles? Uh, starting Witcher 1, we were totally unexperienced as a developer. We had uh, quite big experience of, of business uh, within the gaming industry, but we just hired people, a few, and we started the first development process. So it was, you know, just a lesson for us. I mean, we had to learn everything from, this, from, from scratch. Uh, but from the beginning, we were sure that uh, we have to deliver something great. I mean, not, not, we were never about cutting corners in terms of quality. That's why it took us five years to deliver Witcher, Witcher 1. Uh, we 
delivered only for PC, because that was the easiest, from techn technological point of view, the easiest platform. And the first game was based on external technology from uh, on, uh, Aurora engine from Biowa, which was operating only on PC. Then Witcher 2, we invested all our experience in terms of technology, creating Red Engine. Uh, and two platforms, and then Witcher 3, all experience uh, from Witcher 1 and 2 invested into full-scale production, open world, which wasn't the case of Witcher 1 or 2, and then the, the crowning achievement of, 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 our, of our learning from Witcher 1 and 2. And now, everything we learned on Witcher Saga, we invest in Cyberpunk, because setting is different. Of course, I mean, th there are many different major features, but still we are talking about open world RPG uh, as a you know, core um, definition. So, so we believe that this time we can deliver something even greater than Witcher 3, although it's very, very ambitious. It certainly is. Um, concerning the Witcher series, I, I read an interview from uh, that you were giving in uh, November this year, and uh, I think that the journalist had quoted that uh, it will not be a Witcher 4, but m maybe it will be a new Witcher game. So, uh, w w what can you say about that? Uh, well, there is Gwent, which is kind of Witcher games in Witcher universe. They, they, I mean, we can't create Witcher 4 because there was a trilogy from the beginning, I mean, designed as a, as a trilogy, but no one said that one day we won't decide to develop something in which a universe. But now we are focusing on Cyberpunk and Gwen, so now th there is still a lot to do in those two But don't projects. you want to continue to capitalize on this enormous fa fan base uh, in a maximum way? We are not thinking this way that we are capitalizing the fan base. I mean, we have funds, that's great. We'll deliver Cyberpunk uh, to them, which we believe will be great. And then we'll see, we'll decide. Of course, we know the, the, the further plan, we, but we can't share it. Mm. Okay. And uh, concerning Cyberpunk, I, I think it was first uh, shown to the market that it was going to happen in, was it beginning in 2012? Mm -hmm. uh, so it has been in production for, for a long time. And uh, has your ambition with the game increased due to the success with The Witcher 3? Yes, so yes. you have raised the yes. bar quite Yes, I would well. say even, maybe not dramatically, but seriously. Um, we were waiting for uh, release of Witcher 3 uh, because of at least two reasons. W we were waiting for business effect and uh, it defined it our uh, potential I mean, in terms of cash. And we were waiting for a judgment. Are we are able to deliver great open world RPG? Of course, w w we believe that it's great, but then market has to, uh, has to prove it. And af right after release of Witcher 3, uh, we decided to go full-blown with, with Cyberpunk in terms of uh, everything. Mm. Because uh, when I read into the Cyberpunk and what, what, what I can find on the internet, internet which, which is not much, and a lot of people are speculating, but it seems like your ambition is to make, make the best RPG game ever, uh, containing basically everything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I've, it's I've, enormously for sure, I mean, ambitious. Our ambition uh, is to <clears throat> keep walking. I mean, keep uh, aiming higher uh, than we achieved. And so we want, again, surprise gamers with something great compared to Witcher 3. So that, that, that's, that's for sure, you know, very ambitious goal. I, I would put it a bit differently. I mean, we are always extremely ambitious with each next game. Witcher 1 was supposed to be much bigger and more ambitious project than The Witcher 2. Witcher 3 was bigger, open world, multi-platform game, something two, two steps above The Witcher 2 probably. And Cyberpunk 
allows us to create another game in a totally new universe. Some, some things that were already predefined in the Witcher universe will not um, be binding us in the cyberpunk universe since we will be reinventing this from, 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 from this future times, right? So in a certain way, I believe our creators will be reinventing the world, still within the RPG universe, but, but going on a on totally new layer in a totally new world, uh, and we strongly believe that the product finally will be much more attractive to, to, to masses of consumers. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what, what we want to do. Okay. Um, I, just to remember here, going back to the, to the Witcher series, um, will you continue to, to develop expansion packs for, for, for the Witcher 3 series? No, is, it does Witcher, 3 is, Witcher 3 is closed. It's closed? Yeah. Also, you, you, you released a, a five-year plan uh, in 2016, uh, so it is stretches between 2017 and 2021, and uh, it says you will release uh, Cyberpunk plus one new RPG game. Yes. And since it's not uh, The Witcher, uh, it's a totally new, I mean, new IP. We've well. never said, uh, no, we've said in our strategy that we have two franchises, Cyberpunk mm -hmm. and Witcher, and that's it for now. Uh, so we are, that, I mean, speculating about another IP is, I mean, th there is no uh, um, no reason to speculate another, uh, about another IP. We are working on two franchises, Cyberpunk and Witcher, full stop. So if there is another game, it will be Cyberpunk or Witcher. So nothing else. Okay. For now. For now. For now. <laughs> um, do we have questions from the audience? Hi, uh, so I, I was uh, wondering about your esports um, uh, investments and uh, can, can you just say something more about uh, what you're doing there? And, uh yes, we can. Uh, we've launched first esports seasons, uh, e season, season last August. Uh, it contains a series of um, tournaments ending uh, with World Masters at the beginning of 2019. The total um, prize pool is 800-something uh, US dollars. Thousand US dollars. And our goal is for, for the first season is to organize it uh, in details from the beginning, to, to, to have esports well organized, to have all the rules, to let players know what the rules are just from the beginning. So that was our, our main goal. And so far, so good. I mean, uh, all tournaments went pretty well. Uh, uh, the, the game, uh, the viewership of the game on Twitch is, is great. We were uh, in first 10 uh, most viewed new games in 2017 on Twitch. So, so far so good. Would you say that it helped you uh, getting the inflow of new users? Uh, uh, for sure, I mean, eSports is more about uh, hardcore players. So, so, of course, it always uh, brings some new users, but, but it's mostly for those who want to play a lot, who want to skill. It's less about those who just play for, for fun from time to time. Probably they are, in a big part, also opinion creators, right? So it directly influences the hardcore gamers, the ones that are very competitive gamers, but then they spread the, the message worldwide and, uh, and it gets to, to all the casual gamers as well. And in our case, esports is uh, important because, as I said, uh, Gwent is a pretty competitive game. Of course, there, there is some random, random, randomness, but uh, it's skill-based. So we are showing by this that you can, training in Gwent, you can skill yourself and then you can win. Yeah. And uh, are, are those esports players in general, are they prone to uh, buy uh, like card kegs or, you know, they, they want the whole experience, they want to play through the whole game, right? It or depends. It, it depends. depends yeah. It depends. I mean, uh, there is no paywall in the game, so you don't, ha you don't have to buy. If you play a lot, you get a lot of cards, but some of them probably buy. I don't even know. Some of them just play uh, for free. 
the, 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 the monetization is of course important from business perspective, but uh, designing the game, we are not uh, overstressing monetization. I mean, the, the first and foremost goal is to, 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 to create great game, and monetization has to be there, because if there's no monetization, we'll have to close the project, but, but this is not the, the most important factor for us. Yeah. And uh, just one follow-up on, on the esports thing there. Um, on, on, the, on the Chinese uh, side there, wh what are you seeing there? Are you, are you planning esports there also? Or yes, yes. I mean, the game is, is accessible globally. There is a Chinese version uh, in China, officially launched in, uh, in beta as well. Uh, and Chinese players can play with Western players, so they take a part in this global uh, esports uh, movement. They uh, already did. Yeah, they already did. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, and uh, on, on The Witcher, um, uh, because uh, I guess a lot of gamers who played The Witcher has played also Gwent, uh, or a bit of them. Uh, are you seeing any like crossovers also from Gwent to Witcher? Uh, that they are, <laughs> you know, these guys who are new and they, oh, they are interested in the story and they. They want to buy the witches. It's hard to say that we see it. Uh, we believe that there are people starting from Gwent and then uh, trying Witcher, but mm. in most cases probably opposite around them, from Witcher to, 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 to Gwent. Yeah, but at the same time, I believe all the marketing we do around Gwent, all the Gwent the Witcher card game bus, also somehow reflects you know, the, the Witcher game itself, right? So. People talk on forums, we communicate something. It's, it's about the Witcher card game. So it, it somehow stimulates also the Witcher interest. Yeah, and, and it's worth, you know, start exploring Witcher universe and Witcher 3 is, you know, the best way to, to, to understand yeah. the world. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, take a step back on Gwent as well. Uh, we had a competing, a competing product from uh, Activision Hearthstone. So, so can you say something, how to compare these two games, what's the unique selling point of, of, of Gwent? Gwent is more uh, skill-based, for sure. Uh, I wouldn't go too much into you know, discussing us against others. Uh, it's different. The, 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 the core idea of the game is much different from other games. That's, that's our I mean, that's internally created idea, we're not mimicking any other game. So, so it's, a, it's a tactical, skill-based uh, game which uh, you play by cards, but, but, but it's a very tactical game. Mm. But do, do you think it has the same uh, volume potential as uh, Hearthstone, or, or is it too it's hardcore? It's too early to discuss it. Mm. I mean, we are still in early phase, we are learning. That's, that's, as I said, that's our first product of this kind. So we have crazy ambitions, but it's much easier for us to talk about Cyberpunk because this is the fourth game like this in our history. So, you know, if we are m more bullish <laughs> in terms of, of messaging. In terms of uh, Gwent, our ambitions are really high. But we want not to say too much too early because there is still a hell lot to do ahead of us. Mm. So uh, that was actually my next question. What is, what is left to trim before you release it on a full scale global launch? I mean, full scale is... Uh, I mean, the game is available everywhere. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's our decision to, to name the the moment uh, and name it as a, as a, as a launch. Uh, this year is pretty important because last year we, we were focused on uh, uh, developing or, or, or polishing the core of the game, mecha core mechanics of the game, balancing all, all things. Uh, the game is really well balanced. Now we are focusing on uh, life operations. So, so how to operate this game uh, as a service, how to add as much stuff as possible to, you know, to, 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 to get people um, entertained all the time. So that's the plan for this year. And somewhere 
the, the, some, sometime this year we'll, we'll, we'll have the full launch. But as I said, more important are things like Arena, like uh, frequent drop of cars, Tron Breaker. Those, those things for gamers are the most important. Mm. And finally, on Gwent, at least for me, uh, maybe we open up for questions later. Um, GOG, it's only, it's only, Gwent is only available on GOG right now. Will you consider it to, to launch it on other ESD platforms uh, at full scale? Uh, I can't comment on As this for now, now yeah. Gwent is available on GOG4 PC. However, on PlayStation and Xbox, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. buy it directly mm -hmm. on the console, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, it's not on, on, on GOG. I mean, there is, I mean, the game is available on playgwent.com. So, so it's available for everyone. You just, you just have PC and internet, and you have it. So, mm, it's so it's not limited to any any platform. Okay. Questions from the audience? Uh, on the very top. Okay, on the very top. Yeah, uh, headcount. Uh, now there are over 300 uh, people working on Cyberpunk. Uh, we ended up with 250 or close to 250 uh, working on Witcher 3. Uh, and we'll end up uh, with more than 300 on Cyberpunk. So we'll maybe double the team, maybe not, but closer to double than th anything else. In terms of budget, it will, it will be higher. It will be, I mean, visibly higher than, than, than Witcher 3. Uh, in case of every Witcher, we doubled or tripled the budget of the previous game. What, it's not necessarily the case uh, for, uh, of, of, of Cyberpunk, but the budget, I mean, it's um, important to stress that at the end of the day, the budget is not the key business uh, issue. I mean, the, the quality and sales are key factors of business success. Of course, we try to limit the budget as, as much as possible, but, but it will be higher than which of three. Yeah. Just to, to answer more with, with data, the last phrase Adam mentioned, on The Witcher 3, the direct development spend uh, accounted finally, we can say it right now after three years on the market, for like 10% of the revenues we've made on the game, right? So, okay, you can spend 5% more, but if it allows you to multiply it by another few times uh, on the revenue side, then absolutely this is uh, justifiable. So the bigger it's like the size of the It's bigger. When it's ready. But the first gameplay, no, 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 before when it's ready. The first gameplay, when, uh, I mean, we, we, no, no, yes, I mean, we can't comment on this. Uh, the campaign will start one day and you will see it. So we, we can't start campaign of the campaign. So we don't want to start campaign of the campaign. Nice try, Lawrence. Um, but I have a question as well. They just, uh, can you comment a bit on the culture, how you, how you try to build it in the company? Like, you build these very big games that, you know, <coughs> think it has to be a success. And uh, how do you make sure that, you know, sustainable long term, you build a culture that produces these games and uh, perhaps with less individual, not so dependent on individual contributions that the world like? It's challenging. I mean, growing company without losing your soul is challenging. I mean, there is no one solution for that. Uh, the key factor is probably that those who were behind the success are still within the company. Most of them, majority of them. So, so I believe that they are. Hmm? Ah, oh, because there are many reasons. Of course, as a company, we try to do as much as possible to, to retain them from, you know, um, 
money perspective and other perspectives. So we have many layers of incentive programs and and so on. But the, the most important thing is, is that they, I hope, they believe that inside the project uh, they are able to create the greatest games in the world and no one will stop them because we as business persons in the company, we are not uh, valuing business over quality. So we never stop them from quality because of any business reason. And so they have kind of uh, creative freedom, kind of, of course, we, we have to calculate money, of course, but we are not the company which will ever, ever say that because of fiscal we have to, never. Uh, we always uh, look at the long term, we always look at the quality and we truly believe in it. So I believe that's great environment for, for great creators. Okay, more questions? Otherwise, I, I take the God questions. Uh, can you give a description of what, uh, what your vision is with GOG over the next five years and how it fit in to CD Projekt's overall business model? Yeah, GOG, GOG uh, will develop two legs. I mean, third-party catalog for sure. It's great. We, we are willing to add more and more games uh, without DRM. Um, and we'll look for synergies between GOG and, and CD Projekt Red, uh, working on projects like Gwent in the future. So, so, so uh, GOG Galaxy will be implemented in our future projects. So we work together on, on multiplayer solutions for... Uh, oh, Future now production. For, I mean, for, for now, not for future, for Gwen, but that, that's the base for, for our future ideas. Uh, because we believe that we can end up, or we can have one day, a great multiplayer environment uh, with our own games and uh, third-party stuff as well. So, but it's a very long-term dream, but... Uh, but one day, maybe we'll have it. And uh, concerning a third-party publisher, you have uh, over 550 uh, third-party publisher and more than two and a half thousand games on GOG now. What what are you doing to attract a triple A, a publisher to, to publish on on GOG? And uh, is as far as I understood, uh, the games released on GOG is uh, DRM free. Is that a threat or opportunity long term? We believe it's an opportunity because we've proved it with Witcher 3 that uh, releasing the game without DRM uh, in digital distribution on day one uh, gives you no threat. I mean, sales it was great, and piracy was even, as far as we know, a bit lower than uh, in case of uh, heavily protected title, titles, so we believe that uh, protecting uh, offline games, single-player games, is against gamers, and we won't change this policy because, you know, we believe in it. And it prevents some content providers from delivering or from signing contract with us because they believe in something else. They believe that heavy protection protects them. We don't believe in it. We believe it's against players. So as long as they won't change their mind, we can't cooperate because we won't change our minds for sure because we are sure that we are right. So, so, so what's your main pitch for, for a publisher to, to use GOG instead of uh, or Steam? Or of course, you can I mean, both. but you don't have to use GOG. Uh, 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 instead. instead of Steam. No, yeah, there, are, there are two stores on the market. Why not mm. to be in both of them? Mm. Okay. Uh, more questions? Phil? Yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, The Witcher, uh, incredible momentum, uh, everyone knows. And um, 
So I was going to follow up on the GOG question there. Uh, so basically, uh, because you have this momentum going in, uh, you know, all over the world, um, would you consider to um, do it uh, next release, perhaps Cyberpunk exclusively for for just the GOG? That's cutting the cost. And you mean that or, or you will will fav uh, is the question about fav favor favoring GOG? Uh, yeah. No, no. I mean, in terms of, of of games, we believe that gamers are the most important. So we won't do anything against gamers. Uh, so th the same uh, with uh, physical distribution. We are, we were always against any actions like you have something within the game while buying in, in GameStop or Amazon. The game is everywhere the same. You, there might be some physical add-ons to, to, to the box, but, but we, first and foremost, we care about gamers and everything between us and them is, is less important. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, if it's no further questions in the audience, I thank Adam and Piotr with a big applause. Thank you for coming to Sweden and Stockholm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.